this is Welsh ASMR 82. How you doing? Last time we had a little look at Morocco. So very soon we're going to take a look at Algeria and Ethiopia. Oh, yeah. But today been to two places in Italy myself. Pisa, which is you. Well, I popped in on Pisa. I didn't actually stay in Pisa. I stayed in Luca. And if you don't know the format of these videos yet, what we do is we look at Google Maps for a little while. just by itself and maybe I'll consider doing that for Rome because there's just too much to look at in one video and Italy is such a big place I want to look at so many amazing places so we always go to the football stadium first of course is a palace and lots of stadium stadia around here it's not called Lebanon Tevere it's the name of the river ah Stadio Flaminio
kind of just hitting me how much there is to look at in Rome. Principio Roma. Santa Alberto Magno. Virgin. Ma dobbiamo vedere, vedere il Colosseo. Dov'è? I knew that the stadia were on the outskirts. But I went so long ago, I can't really remember. Hmm, it's not on the outskirts. There's an airport there. Centro sportivo delle tre fontane. Nervi Nuovo Centro Congressi di Roma Piscine delle Rose Museo Priest Etnografi Corini Luna Park Oh That's in me lies there was a uh, Park, ex Luna Park Permanenti di Roma. Wow, the architecture here is amazing. <laughs> Said everyone ever about Rome. <laughs> what am I thinking? Okay, so I totally cheated. But in my defense, we've got a lot to get through. Here is the Let's say from this entrance And people queuing into the street I mean, why are they queuing a straight line and not that way? I don't know It was amazing But To be honest The thing that really blew my mind a lot more Was just around the corner Here, I think But yes, you, in case you didn't quite realise, the Colosseum is on a roundabout. <laughs> so you literally have to drive around the Colosseum to get somewhere in Rome. It's amazing. Well, I suppose it's not really a roundabout. I'm gonna I'm definitely going to do a 
video on Rome by itself because there's too much that I would miss. And I'm going to come out to view and we're going to look at some other areas of Italy. Okay. Very briefly, I want to show you Luca. Which is next to Pisa. No, yeah, I suppose I'd love to show you Pisa as well. But I wanted to show you where I stayed. It wasn't on the coast. So. Tuscany. So Luca is a walled city. So as the name suggests, there's the inner city here. di Santa Catarina, the church of Santa Catarina, Saint Catarina, Catherine, Fontana del Nottolini, Duomo, the cathedral, Palazzo Ducale, the palace, and there's all, there's churches everywhere, look, Chiesa di San Tommaso in Pelleria, Chiesa di Santa Maria, Corte Orlandi, Chiesa di San Matteo, Chiesa di San Paolino, Chiesa del Crocifisso dei Bianchi, Chiesa dei SS Giovanni Reparata, Il Monastero di Santo Benedetto, So I highly recommend going, it's really beautiful. We went in the spring and the weather was just gorgeous. Oh, I think we sat there and had drinks in the evening outside. Oh, maybe not there. Next to a church. Oh, you never know. Hmm, it's lovely. Okay. Right. Let's do the obligatory trip to Pisa. thing though where you put your hands on it. You know, in the picture obviously not. Trying to push it over. Galileo Apple. Galileo Galilei. Strada Statale Aurelia. I always get shocked when I don't see these landmarks straight away. It does um, suggest that we're all a little bit small and insignificant when it comes down to it. So I remember there being like a grassy area and loads of really grand cathedrals Oh, 
right next to the city centre. I hope so. San Marco. Can't see the wood from the trees. I'm gonna have to cheat again, aren't I? Palazzetto dello sport. So there's the train station. Batistero, Duomo, Parocchi di Pisa. Is it not gonna? I thought it might. Um, that is absolutely stunning. The uh, Duomo Cathedral. So very quickly done my homework. And actually the Battistero is just the... It's not it. This is it. I can say that it does not look as impressive on Google as it does in real life. Basically, it's the... Okay, I can appreciate now why there is so much water. Because it's basically an inland... What's it called? Laguna Veneta. So the lagoon. Who thought it would be a good idea to build in the middle of the sea? Rio della Mandonetta. Mm -hmm. I've never been to Venice. Oh, Canal Grande. It's the main canal. Venezia. Venezia Santa Lucia. So it must be the train station, I guess. Chiesa um. della Madonna dell'Orto. The Church of the Madonna, Porto di Venezia, Canale della Misericordia. small helps but I found the Basilica de San Marco.
Basilica Patriarcale di San Marco di Venezia, Campanile di San Marco. Campanile is the bell. This is the Basilica, Museo di San Marco. Torre del Orologio. Orologio must be like timekeeping or something. So this must be the Piazza San Marco. San Giorgio Maggiore Isola obviously Island Isola della Giudecca Sacca Fisola Isola di San Piaggio Santo Spirito, San Clemente, la Grazia. Whistle stop to over. We've got a Naples. Napoli. The Isle of Capri is just there as well. You know very, very little about the Naples. So I'll see if I can spot something cool and then. Oh, San Francesco di Paola. That looks pretty cool. Piazza del Plebiscito. Plebiscito.
Villa piccola, Capri, Marina grande, Villa Iuris, Pielo Capo, Certosa di San Giacomo, Via Nuove del Faro, Via Linaro. Well, that's so weird, why is it on that? So, Cagliari and Palermo are also really important places. Palermo, vediamo. It's the red roof that really get me. So pretty. Piazza Giulio Cesare, Giulio Caesar Palace, um, Square. Chiesa e Chiostro di San Domenico Madonna del Lume Cassieri 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 Via Vittorio Emanuele Palazzo Caramontesteri Golfo degli Angeli, Angeli, Sardegna, La Muta, wow,
Yeah, I was not in the right place. There might be somewhere else called Milan. But it's not Milan, Milan. I was like, why are there so many farms? Oh, wow. Okay, so... Parco Sempione. That's very nice. The Castello Sforzesco. Arena Civica. City, Gatta Melata. What is that? Look at that architecture, that's amazing. Piazza Giro, Giro Valle. This is like the business district or something. Very cool. Milan, oh yeah, Milan kind of is the, indi um, no, not industrial, economic center of, we'll find out the facts in a minute, Portello, it looks a lot more modern and, uh, Cimitero Maggiore, the big cemetery, major, great job. Hmm. Sul Milano, Club San Siro. Ok, let's quickly go to Torino. Is that 
the river pool. Cimitero monumentale. Another cemetery. Very grand. Wow, look at the architecture. Cimitero monumentale, Torino no. Parrocchia Gesù Operaio Federazione Italiana Pallavolo Cimitero di Sassi Madonna del Rosario Villa della Regina La Regina will be the Queen Villa Gualino Stadio Primo Nebbiolo if I'll actually see Stadio Olimpico but Juventus don't play there anymore they have moved mm, since we're going outside the city but Massive football stadiums tend to be on the outside, the outskirts. Just oh. Piazza della Repubblica. Reale. The Royal Palace, Tomb di San Giovanni Battista, Torre Campanaria, the Bell Tower. It's very funky. di passo vuole Olympic Club 2000 sometimes I read things I'm like oh no that just means gym
You can see why. So that was monstrous and I missed so many very good places but I did my best let's have a little look at some facts to do with Italy so it's time to take a look at all the facts and figures Eventually I will read to you in Italian as well. Italiano. Okay, Italy. Italy, Italian, Italia. Officially the Italian Republic. La Repubblica Italiana. The country consisting of a peninsula delimited by the Alps and surrounded by several islands. Italy is located in South Central Europe and it is also considered a part of Western Europe. A unitary parliamentary republic with its capital in Rome country covers a total area of just over 300,000 kilometers squared and shares land borders with France, Switzerland, Austria, Slovenia and the enclave microstates of Vatican City and San Marino. Italy has a territorial exclave in Switzerland, Campione, and a maritime exclave in Tunisian waters, Lampedusa, with around 60 million inhabitants, Italy is the third most populous member state of the European Union. Of course, we're familiar with the Italian flag. The anthem is Il Canto degli Italiani, the song of the Italians. And that is where Italy is located. In the 
dark green. Due to its central geographic location in southern Europe and the Mediterranean, Italy has historically been home to myriad peoples and cultures. In addition to the various ancient peoples dispersed throughout what is now the modern day Italy, the most predominant being the Indo-European Italic peoples, who gave the peninsula its name, beginning from the classical era, Phoenicians and Carthaginians founded colonies mostly in Insula, Italy. Greeks established settlements in the so-called Magna Grecia of southern Italy, while Etruscans and Celts I'm a Celt inhabited central and northern Italy respectively. An Italic tribe known as the Latins formed the Roman Kingdom in the 8th century BC which eventually became a republic with a government of the Senate and the people. The Roman Republic initially conquered and assimilated its neighbours on the Italian peninsula, eventually expanding and conquering parts of Europe, North Africa and Asia. By the first century BC, the Roman Empire emerged as the dominant power in the Mediterranean basin and became a leading cultural, political and religious centre, inaugurating the Pax Romana, a period of more than 200 years during which Italy's law, technology, economy, art and literature developed. Italy remained the homeland of the Romans and the metropole of the empire, whose legacy can also be observed in the global distribution of culture, governments, Christianity and the Latin script. So even the alphabet that we write many of our languages in comes from this group of people. That's what we write English in after all. During the early, early Middle Ages, Italy endured the fall of the Western Roman Empire and barbarian invasions. But by the 11th century, numerous rival city-states and maritime republics, mainly in the northern and central e regions of Italy, rose to great prosperity through trade, commerce and banking, laying the groundwork for modern capitalism. These mostly independent statelets served as Europe's main trading hubs with Asia, and the Near East, often enjoying a greater degree of democracy than the larger feudal monarchies that were consolidating throughout Europe. However, part of central Italy was under the control of the theocratic papal states, while southern Italy remained largely feudal until the 19th century partially as a result of a succession of Byzantine, Arab, Norman, Angevin, Aragonese and other foreign conquests of the region. The Renaissance began in Italy 
and spread to the rest of Europe, bringing a renewed interest in humanism, science, exploration and art. Italian culture flourished, producing famous scholars, artists and polymaths. During the Middle Ages, Italian explorers discovered new routes to the Far East and the New World, helping to usher in the European Age of Discovery. Nevertheless, Italy's commercial and political power significantly waned with the opening of trade routes that bypassed the Mediterranean. Centuries of rivalry and infighting between the Italian city-states, such as the Italian wars of the 15th and 16th centuries, left Italy fragmented and several Italian states were conquered and further divided by multiple European powers over the centuries. By the mid-19th century, rising Italian nationalism and calls for independence from foreign control led to a period of revolutionary, revolutionary political upheaval. After centuries of foreign domination and political division, Italy was almost entirely unified in 1861, establishing the Kingdom of Italy as a great power. From the late 19th century to the early 20th century, Italy rapidly industrialised, mainly in the north, and acquired a colonial empire, while the south remained largely impoverished and excluded from industrialisation, fueling a large and influential diaspora. Despite being one of the four main allied powers in World War I, Italy entered a period of economic crisis and social turmoil, leading to the rise of the Italian fascist dictatorship in 1922. Participation in World War II on the Axis side ended in military defeat, economic destruction and the Italian Civil War. Following the liberation of Italy, the country abolished their monarchy established a democratic republic and enjoyed a prolonged economic boom, becoming a highly developed country. Today, Italy is considered to be one of the world's most culturally and economically advanced countries. With the world's eighth largest economy by nominal GDP, third in the European Union, sixth largest national wealth and third largest central bank gold reserve. It ranks very highly in life expectancy, quality of life, health care and education. The country plays a prominent role in regional and global economic, military, cultural and diplomatic affairs both a regional power and a great power, and is ranked the world's eighth most powerful military. Italy is a founding and leading member of the European Union and a member of numerous international institutions, including the UN, NATO, the OECD, the OSCE, the WTO, the G7. Mediterranean, the Council of Europe, Uniting for Consensus, the Schengen Area, and many more. The country has long been a global centre of art, music, literature, philosophy, science and technology, and fashion, and has greatly influenced and contributed to diverse fields including cinema, cuisine, sport, jurisprudence, banking and business. As a reflection
fraction of its cultural wealth. Italy is home to the world's largest number of World Heritage Sites, 55, and is the fifth most visited country. interesting um, map here. It really shows about the unity of all the different areas. Can you imagine if nowadays we just had all these as different European countries, and not one which is Italy. And this is the same can be said of many places in the world, but in Europe in particular. I'll come back to this when um, we get we get around to doing um, Spain, as I can uh, talk confidently about the different areas of Spain. But it's more useful to think as of Italy and many other countries. It's a collection of smaller countries, really, much like um, the United States, but on a much, much more smaller scale. In this particular example, um, I'll find the year in a second. This doesn't even include Sardinia, which is currently part of Italy. It says it's the crown of Aragon which is basically what modern-day Spain. So northern Spain, Aragon, is in the north. Aragon. Whereas Corsica is part of this period's Italy, and that is current-day France. Monaco as well. The Republic of Genoa. This area here is France. Nice also in the Duchy of Savoy. Uh, Turin is part of modern day Italy, so I think this is the, the part here. No, I can't tell. Chambéry is France. And some of this goes up into uh, modern day Switzerland, Austria, this is modern day Croatia, but Dalmatia um, is included in the territories of this state's Italy. Republic of Siena, the Papal States, the Kingdom of 
Naples, Napoli being here, we saw that earlier, the Kingdom of Sicily, Palermo, the Republic of Venice, Istria, Dalmatia, Ragusa, the Republic of Ragusa, Mantua, Ferrara, mm. this is the Eastern Duchy, the Duchy of Modena, Lucca, where I've been, the Republic of Florence, the Duchy of Milan, the, I think I is the Monarchy of Monferrat, Salute. Italian states before the beginning of the Italian, Italian wars in 1494. That uh, is depicting Christopher Columbus. Italian, of course. Ooh, an animated map. And uh, explains its um, African colonies there. Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc, Monte Bianco, in Nausta Valley, the highest point in the European Union. I've had this place recommended to me, the Cinque Terra. How beautiful is that? Vernazza, one of the five villages of the Cinque Terre in, on the Ligurian Riviera. Tre Cime Natural Park in the Dolomites. Flamingos in the delta of the Po River. Dolphins. Yes, volcanology. That is Mount Vesuvius, apparently. Italian wolf, which inhabits the Apennines and the Western Alps, features prominently in Latin and Italian cultures, such as the legend of the founding of Rome. Because of the great longitudinal extension of the peninsula, basically meaning it's very long, and the mostly mountain mountainous internal conformation, the climate of Italy is highly diverse. In most of the inland, northern or central regions, the climate ranges from humid subtropical to humid continental and oceanic. In particular, the climate of the Po Valley geographical region is mostly continental, with harsh winters and hot summers. The coastal areas of Liguria, Tuscany and most of the south generally fit the Mediterranean climate stereotype. Conditions on peninsula coastal areas can be very different from the interior's higher ground and valleys, particularly during the winter months when the higher altitude tend to be cold, wet and often snowy. The coastal regions have mild winters and warm and generally dry summers, although lowland valleys can be quite hot in summer. Average winter temperatures vary from 0 to 12 in the Alps in Sicily. Sorry, 0 in Alps to 12 in Sicily, so average temperatures range from 20 to over 25 degrees centigrade. Winters can vary well, widely across the country with lingering cold, foggy and snowy periods in the north and milder, sunnier conditions in the south. Summers can be hot and humid across the country, particularly in the south, while northern and central areas can experience occasional strong thunderstorms from spring to autumn. Okay, shall we have a little listen?
incidentally, I hate numbers. Numbers are always really difficult when you're learning a foreign language, aren't they? Try to avoid them as best I can. Sessanta coma due. Si? L'Italia. Ufficialmente Repubblica Italiana. È uno stato situato nell'Europa meridionale. Il cui territorio coincide in gran parte con l'omonima regione geografica. L'Italia è una repubblica parlamentare e conta una popolazione di circa 60,2 milioni di abitanti. La capitale è Roma. La parte continentale, delimitata dell'arco alpino, confina a nord, da ovest e est, con Francia, Svizzera. Austria e Slovenia. Il resto del territorio circondato dai mari Ligure, Tirreno, Ionio e Adriatico. Si protende nel mar Mediterraneo, occupando la penisola italiana e numerose isole. Le maggiori sono Sicilia e Sardegna, per un totale di bla bla bla. 300.000 chilometro squadrato, che non so. Gli stati della città di Vat del Vaticano e di San Marino sono enclavi della Repubblica, mentre Campioni d'Italia è l'unica enclave italiana. Con la scessa di Roma, che fu capitale della Repubblica Romana e poi dell'Impero Romano, si ebbe il primo processo di unificaz unificazione della pen penisola, destinata a rimanere per secoli il centro politico e culturale della civiltà, civiltà occidentale. Dopo la caduta dell'impero romano d'Occidente, l'Italia medievale fu soggetta a invasioni e dominazioni di popolazioni germaniche, come gli Ostrogoti, i Longobardi e i Normanni, perdendo la propria unità politica nel... Mm, non so come si dice in italiano... XV secolo con la diffusione del rinascimento ridivenne il centro culturale del mondo occidentale ma dopo le guerre d'Italia del XVI secolo, secolo ricca, sì, sì, ricade sotto l'agemonia delle potenze straniere quali Francia, Spagna e Austria. Durante il risorgimento, gli italiani combatterono per l'indipendenza nazionale, indipendenza nazionale e per l'unità d'Italia, finché nel 1861 fu proposto proclamato il Regno d'Italia, che completò la riunificazione con la presa di Roma del 20 settembre 1870 e la vittoria della Prima Guerra Mondiale. Dal 1882 al 1960 l'Italia ha posseduto in un impero coloniale How many numbers? nel 1946 dopo il ventennio fascista la sconfitta nella seconda guerra mondiale e la guerra civile a seguito di un referendum istituzionale lo Stato italiano divenne una repubblica. Etimologia.
etimologia del nome. Il nome proprio Italia nasce come topono, toponimo. La sua origine, oggetto di studi sia da parte di, di linguisti sia di storici, è controversa. Non sempre, tuttavia, sono suggerite etimologie, etimologie in senso stretto, bensì ipotesi che poggiano su considerazioni estranee alla specifica ricostruzione linguistica del nome oppure che sono riferite a tradizioni non dimostrate come l'esistenza del re Italo o poco verosimili come la correlazione del nome con la vite secondo un'interpretazione alto medio e vale corroborata questa dalla nota circostanza che i tiponomi tiponimi dell'Italia meridionale sono spesso dovuti alla colonizzazione greca di quei territori avvenuta in tempi protostorici. Il nome Italia sarebbe stato portato da navigatori provenienti da Atalea, oggi Adalia, città marittima della Panfilia, a sua volta fondata, in epoca ancora più antica, da coloni greci provenienti dal onomi, om, non posso, dal omonima città della Lidia, regione questa dell'Anatolia occidentale. Mi piace in Italia come si dice history, è la storia, che come story in inglese, ma la stessa cosa in Italia, no? La storia è le, tutte le due, tutte e due. Mi piace questo, è come geologia. La geologia dell'Italia è molto complessa. L'assetto fisiografico e geologico attuale dell'area comprensiva della penisola italiana, delle sue isole e dei bacini marini adiacenti, è il risultato di numerosi eventi geodinamici successivi riconducibili in estrema sintesi all'interazione tra due placche litosferiche. La placca africana e quella europea a partire dal Cretacico superiore, periodo nel quale iniziò la progressiva chiasura del paleooceano della Tetide. Il margine meridionale africano, frammentandosi durante l'avvicinamento al continente settentrionale europeo, ha originato una serie di microplacche interposte, la cui successiva accrezione ha dato luogo nel corso del Cenozoico l'attuale territorio peninsulare e siciliano. So just talking about the tectonic plates. So saying about the placa euroasiatica and the placa africana. Sort of going into each other there. And that's what I assume. Going back to 
to uh, Year 9 Geography lessons Is why there are so many Well, that's why there's a massive mountain range in that country And the volcanoes Which came as a, a Where they collision of the two plates In each other Placque tectonica Vesuvio, which very famously erupted, killing everyone in Pompeii. E il Vesuvio, visto dagli scavi archeologi, er, archeologici, cici, non posso dire questa parola, archeologici di Pompeii. Scavi, scavi is... Um, Scavi archeologici. I can't think of the word in English, but I know what it is. It's like the ruins, that's the word. Scavi. Okay. Um, I'm going to end there, I think. you so so much for watching the video and um, I wanted to say a massive thank you to all of my subscribers hello to anyone who's joined us recently and massive hello to uh, those that have been around forever hello ciao and um, obviously a massive Thank you to my patrons as well. Thank you guys. Well, I hope you're asleep. But if you're not, then maybe you could give this video a like and drop a comment as well, which would be really nice to hear from you. And um, I will hopefully see you soon. And if this is my first video that you watched, then consider pressing subscribe.